Hey guys, well we got a nice little project for us. This is a reed pump, concrete pump. I don't even know the true name of these things. But either way, uh, you basically pour concrete in here, it pumps it out this hole. <laughs> I should have had a picture of uh, it put together in its original form, but this is the way I got it. And so what happens here is these are suction based cylinders and there's a, a fitting that goes here and it's called an S tube and it shifts back and forth and as it sucks in concrete it shifts over, pumps it in, shifts over, sucks in that way, pumps it out. Either way, my concern now or my job is to make this fit in here. There's a lot of play in this area. And of course, this that's a center line hole over there. This is the center line hole over here. Now this would normally be a really easy job for any line boring attachment or any line boring equipment. And I do have line boring equipment. However, not one that can handle this diameter. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna try and attempt to line bore it and make some, uh, an arm that will reach out and hold on to, uh, you know, to where it doesn't chatter so much or cut out a ring. What I've done before is I've cut out a ring and I've placed it in there and welded it around the perimeter and that fixed it up. It wasn't so bad. I would machine a ring that pressed in there and that would be the diameter for that and it worked but I just don't know at the moment. Uh, so I'm gonna give it a shot with the line boring and see if, if I can reach out that far. I'm a little concerned it won't make it but well, no, till you try it. So here we go. Okay, so I broke out my line boring equipment, <clears throat> and so it, it's not going to work. Uh, this attachment here only reaches out so far, and this is a smaller unit with the one and a quarter inch bar. And I could spend the time in making an attachment that attaches to the bar and extends out far enough for it to reach that reach that diameter, or I could also spend the time in making that replacement ring as I mentioned earlier. And so that's what I think I'll do since I, that's the way I did it last time. Basically, I'll, I'll get a piece of bar that spans that and find the center, torch out this ring and machine a new ring, slide it in there, weld it up and be done. Uh, what tends to happen though when you do that is it'll shrink a couple of thousands and it could uh, possibly shrink, meaning it'll pull tighter this way which might make the hole loose again. And so this time I'll machine it a few thousand smaller, maybe like 12,000 smaller than the original size or the size it needs to be. So then if, it's, uh, if it does pull, I can just buff it out with a wheel and that'll be fine. That'll be good enough and it will work. So I found a piece of steel here uh, you know with uh, working with heavy equipment sometimes I don't know if I have uh, AR plate or just 836 plate so you know a good test with the center punch <laughs> usually does it if it dulls your center punch well then it's hardened steel <laughs> but if it uh, you know makes a mark easily enough well you know it's just regular old mild, mild steel or something that you can you can torture a machine rather easily so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut out a hole cut this out Cut a ring over there and install it, be done. It'll be a little bit of machining uh, with my lathe. It's about the max that my lathe will want to do on that size diameter, but you gotta do what you gotta do uh, when you can do it. So that's what I'm gonna do and let's keep going.
All right, so what I'm gonna do is, I opted to go ahead and cut that circle, that ring out of there. And being as I only have this as my circle burner, uh, this edge here gets in the way a little bit. It does, doesn't allow me to make it all the way around. And so I am actually going to trim a little section of this off. Now, before you guys get all up in arms, it's gonna be fine. I'm only gonna cut off like half an inch, maybe five eighths of an inch. But it'll do one of two things. It'll make clearance for this tail. I could make this shorter, but I'm not gonna do that. It'll make clearance for this tail, and then it will let me know uh, physically, just by looking at it right away, which ones I've cut out a ring uh, and installed it into here for, into here. And so that'll tell me right away when I see the machine. I'm like, oh, okay, it's got that notch in the back. That means it's got a ring in it. Now, I'm pretty much the only one that does a lot of the major repairs for this type of, or for this customer. And so I'll know right away when I look at it. It's got a ring, then I can just machine a new ring, replace it. It'd be a real easy uh, replacement uh, item at that point. So that is the route we're gonna do it, since my line boring machine couldn't uh, handle that. So let's get to cutting. So that looks good, uh, nice and smooth. And give me the clearance I need. So now I can immediately tell, all right, that one's got a ring in it. So let's cut the ring next. Actually, let me polish this up just a little bit, clean that up and uh, get to the green.
Okay, now I gotta take that off, just cut those sections there and we'll be good. Okay, it's about as good as I'm gonna get it for now. Uh, it's semi round, can't tell too much. Right, that's what they sell the ground, grinding stones for, right on the grinders. So I'll clean that up, take a measurement, and uh, see how round it is I mean it should be fairly round and then take a measurement of the inside diameter of that and start to cutting that plate that fits in there so next up is grinding these smooth okay so got that fairly smooth not bad right so uh, next up make a ring that fits in there and put a bevel on the ring weld the perimeter around there and stick it back in there and so it's looking good so far uh, so far so good 
And for those that uh, may be questioning the how tight that goes to this, it's not really a machine press fit. I mean, it is a fit where you don't want it to be moving around naturally, right? So, you know, within, within a few thousands, I think I can squeeze that in with the with the ring and with the little grinding stone. I can get it, you know. Uh, if people in other countries can do it, I can do it too. <laughs> you ought to see some of those other YouTube pages. They're, they're crazy. It's pretty cool. But uh, anyway, uh, next, cut the ring and throw it on a lathe. Okay, so the next step is to cut the ring out of this material here and what's interesting about working with heavy equipment you just never know what material you're using unless you mark it and i didn't mark it so uh, to determine whether it's a hardened plate or not but if you center punch it and your center punch gets flat well you know <laughs> that's a dead giveaway that it's a hard plate but this one worked out pretty good so i'm going to be uh, cutting that hole out i've already measured it out and cut the outside diameter disc first and i'll cut the inside diameter and then we'll throw it on the lathe so let's go <laughs> well you're not gonna believe this but uh i pressed the wrong button on here and i moved it over to photo so i took a photo of me cutting this out but i didn't take any video which it's a real bummer but uh anyway so i'll i'll make sure to video this part cutting the inside part of the ring so you guys can see that now this one will be in in uh in steps because i have to twist the plate uh, but you know that's all right it'll work out actually let me see if i can go get my cutting table and that way i just continue going around it one time just swap it over
I'm gonna break my pliers. That'll work. I'll let it cool off and I'll start machining. Okay, so that looks like it'll do it on that side. Now I need to turn the jaws around and grab it from the outside to machine the inside. Next step. Okay, so now that I got that turned around, I don't know if this is a proper way of doing it or not. Uh, I don't machine much, as you can tell, because I don't have any machining on my videos. So, I'm sure you guys will chime in, which is fine, right? Because uh, that's what it's all about, it's all learning. So, I, I didn't tighten it so much that it would crush, but that it also could be a danger and that it will come off. And, unfortunately, I'm not really prepared to cut the inside. I only ha I had a... A mini type of boring bar but I snapped the end of it off so I'm gonna have to figure out how to use one of these and angle it in there and get as deep as I can turn it around then continue the cut so uh, I am at a bit uh, a bit stuck so we'll have to see what I can do from here let's give it a shot see what happens get that serrated stuff off so good let's keep going
Okay, 50,000.
Okay, so we got that welded up. Looking all right. Uh, people ask why I, I do the on-off pulse with the MIG. Gives you a little more control, you know, if you're trying to weld uphill with MIG, it's very difficult, especially out of position in that case. And I don't really like welding in the down, downward position. I know I did and I know I did on the outside, but that's because I could see where I was going. Whereas here was a bit of a more of a challenge. So on off pulses going uphill, make sure you got penetration because I could see the gap on the way up, but I couldn't see the gap on the way down if I were to weld downhill. Or if I welded uphill, then I'd have these uh, drips hanging out. Uh, so to avoid that, just the on off pulse works fine. So this is done. I'll, I'll uh, grind this up here and see how it fits after it cools a little bit but let me let me flatten these surfaces All right, so now's the time to find out. See if this thing fits. Let me set you guys down right in here. Yep. <coughs> it is snug. Look at that. It is within a couple of thousands of fitting. I might be able to tap that in there. Hold on, let me tap that in there. <laughs> Ta-da! Well, it worked. It's uh, professional guesswork. <laughs> you know, that edge, like I was telling you, you know, it, it warps and it gives it just a little bit more of an opening. But that is a really nice fit. So that is really, really good. I think we're going to call it good there. So not bad. I'll tap this guy out and uh, call the customer and say it's ready to go. So uh, again, you know, there's different schools of thought as to how to get this done. You know, if you can line board, fantastic. In my case, I could not line board. That's why I had to make this notch and cut it out with a torch and make a ring. Now, whether that's good or bad, I know I don't like it when I run into that when, when I'm line boring a piece of equipment. <laughs> that is uh, pretty bad. But the benefit to this, at least, is that this ring that I made was roughly about 5 16 thick all the way around. And so they normally call me before this is wore out that much. You know, they're they're talking like a really small tolerance as far as before they call that they say it's too wore out. So that being said, it won't wear through five sixteenths of material. <clears throat> so that's good. So now this makes this a replaceable item without worry of wearing into that the edge of that bore. You know, like equipment gets really egg shaped. This doesn't. So that that's the benefit to that. <clears throat> so uh, I think we're we're in good shape here. Uh, of course, I'm gonna get some um, get some feedback. I'm sure for <laughs> about the uh, about the machining stuff. You know, I'm, I'm not a machinist, so I'm glad it worked. This is a you know I've done one of these before, so it worked out well. So I hope you guys learned something and uh, appreciate your your support. And thanks for the follow. We'll catch up with you guys later.